Hi, I'm Rachel. I'm Ryan. And today I have kind of a small outline I have put together for things that I would like to talk about. Um, there's been some really good lessons um, that we've uh, learned over the last couple of days, me specifically. I don't know. Uh, I think Ron's taken in some things too, but mm -hmm. Uh, just to start, I'd like to discuss um, um, our dreams and um, how I feel like the Lord can communicate with us through our dreams and give us warnings and uh, just show us show us the way, so to speak. And um, I'd like to talk about a few events that have gone on for us over the last couple of days that have been a little emotional. They've been uh, very guided by the Lord as well, and, and I took in some very powerful lessons about health and how to go about things even more naturally than we've been going about. And um, uh, and I'd like to discuss towards the end of the video about how um, we sometimes feel darkness. Um, we can feel it from others around us or in our environment and how to um, use the love that you have from the Lord to avoid that darkness and, and but still be able to function normally even though you might be around it. And that's where I'd like to take the discussion today. Sounds good. I would like to start with um, the dreams and the messages from from God, the Most High, however you like to say it or feel it. Um, dreams come to us sometimes, and, and and a lot of us throughout my life, I've heard people want want meaning from dreams. There's books about dreams. You can look up things online about dreams. It's, it's crazy, but I, I've always had a very deep feeling that they're, they're, they're messages and they're, it's our own, our own consciousness guiding us in the right direction and giving us uh, things that we need to work on or focus on. Um, I have told my children for many years, oh, I had a dream. Um, just take it, take it to mind. Just remember mom had a dream about something and be aware of these things around you. Um, recently, my son... Uh, my oldest son had a dream, um, and it, it referred to something with his, um, his young son. And then um, that turned into, he made it an absolutely beautiful song. Um, and we can share that or copy that link in the description because I think everyone should hear his message. Um, but he took it to heart, and, um, and I think it may have been a small warning because uh, our grandson got a little sick and had a fever and... Um, that it was just a little scary for me. I mean, he's he's uh he's been a healthy little boy and hasn't had any issues. And and uh, if you've watched our previous videos, you know that my brain likes to go go to the hospital, go to the hospital, go to the hospital. Even though I know that's not the right way now, that's the wrong thing because especially with what's going on, they might try to quarantine people for something that they don't need quarantine for because they're pushing fear. Well, and poison. I, yep, so. and I let the fear get the best of me just a touch. Um, kind of panicked a little bit and then instantly realized there is a natural way for everything. Um, God has put this here, put us here with everything we need and our natural immune system and fevers are very normal and we're supposed to have a fever to fight off infection. Um, my concern was making sure that the, uh, the fever didn't get to where it... Uh, it could become dangerous or cause problems. So um, I, I instantly did some research and, and learned new things for myself and for my daughter. Uh, uh, cell salts, uh, ferrum phosphate in particular is for fever and it can be used in um, even newborn infants. Four little tablets every 15 minutes until the fever subsides. And I now know for a fact that it brings a fever down and it brings it down quick. And um, it's it, it's amazing to know uh, all these natural resources that we can use in our own homes um, to to help our our uh, families heal. Um, and it worked for his son and his wife. And his wife, yes. Both, because yeah. they're both suffering from this fever that they couldn't shake. Yeah. And yeah, they were hurting. Yeah. It worked for both of them and quickly. So, and just yet, to add that. Yeah, and um, apple cider vinegar um, mixed with water and a lukewarm towel. And the, our daughter. Yep, and Kaylee, yep. And uh, you uh, actually just uh, moisten the child with the apple cider vinegar and the uh, warm water. And the vinegar actually evaporates faster than water 
So um, it pulls the fever out of the body. So as you're taking in the ferrum phosphate, and um, we also did um, administer colloidal silver, um, and 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 gradually over just a few hours of time, um, spending the day with us, and Grandma made some good soup, and uh, we plant based plant based soup. We we got them we got them back to feeling great again, and um, I'm glad that we were able to do it together as a family. It was a very um, uplifting feeling that we all came together. We were a little bit uh, nervous. It was kind of scary. Uh, the infant getting a little sicker than we're used to, but we, we all handled it really well and we came together as a family and did what we needed to do in a natural, loving way. And there was uh, a lot of love. And I believe that um, that that plays a huge role in healing um, for every one of us. We need to have love around us as well. Um, and I was not nervous, just for the record. I was. <laughs> I was doing my best to keep her calm and yeah, to I keep her, because she was in that fear reactionary state a bit, thinking too far ahead I was. about what doctors and hospitals. Yeah. I'm like, whoa, whoa, calm down, calm down. This no, no. So, yeah, not all of us, not all of us, but yeah. And and it was it was a I, oh, it I was add some on that. It was a very um, awesome learning experience for me, too, because I had to kind of learn how to calm myself um, because I didn't want my grandson or my daughter to see me um, over panicked or or over worried. I just knew that in that moment I needed to um, um, find the natural route to do things the natural way uh, and do it with the love and care that I could without having any, like being frantic or nervous. I didn't want the baby to pick up on that, that nervous energy that I, I, I had for, for a moment. And, um, I, I'm glad I let it pass quickly. I, I did. I asked, I asked God to help me through it. And I, I know that he did. Um, I, I just know that I feel it and, um, things got taken care of. It was a good, it was a good feeling. Um, I, I sometimes wonder with these dreams because I've had them before. Can I ask something for you on? Yeah, go ahead. Okay, on that on that part, we went over there to my my son's house. When we got there, and his wife and son both were sick. For me, what came to me right away, because because I am now connected to my heart, and I explained it later as it was almost like my motherly instinct, so to speak. But that saying that all other men do, just so you know, men, the heart is a powerful, powerful tool. But for me, when I went in there, and I know her ability to find these things and remedies and things we've already know together and have been doing, and the way they've been living in the plant based and the just healthy, knew this like. We had to help them get through this. And what came to me instantly just looking around was I want, I envisioned them here in this place, all of us in the living room getting through is what came to me as an image in the heart. If you can envision <clears throat> such a thing, because that's a powerful tool in there. And that's what it was. And that was right away before any hospital doctor or anything. No, bring them here. So all the things she just said that we could do in this, this love and knowledge and things we could share and learn together and help them get through it because it sucks trying to get through things on your own. Mm -hmm. So just to say that came, that came instantly for me with what I saw. And that's really more of a message for other men out there because I didn't used to act or perceive things in that manner or fashion. I wasn't able to, and I left all of the caretaking up to her. Because I had totally given up my role of caretaker because I couldn't even take care of myself. Just to add that in there. So you, go ahead. Yeah. I just want to add that in. Yeah, it was, it was, a um, it, it was a good day of helping everyone heal. And I'm glad that he, he, he suggested, <clears throat> I was kind of a little um, nervous at that point. And when I'm he glad suggested, they accepted. yeah, they accepted and they came here and, and our role, um, now as parents is not to tell them what to do, um, I did have a gut instinct or a, a feeling, almost my fear tried to tell me, you, you, we need to do this, we need to do that, we need to do this, we need to do that. But you have to, I think as parents, we have to be respectful of 
um, our children's wishes, especially for their children, and be there to support them and love them, um, and not 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 boss them around or tell them you have to do this or or come come to um, conclusions together and actually help each other, which is exactly what we did. I was unaware um, at that time of how to um, naturally reduce a fever. I had remembered things from the past. Um, one person told me a long time ago to, to rub rubbing alcohol on my son so the fever would get pulled out, and that did work, but it dried his skin out, and it and it was painful for him. And then I, um, when I started looking thing, looking into things yesterday, oh, duh, apple cider vinegar. I use that to heal my body all the time. Like, it's right here in my cabinet. I never would have thought, but it makes so much sense that, yes, it would evaporate faster, and it would do the exact same thing. And and it's so amazing because I had cell salts in the house. You've been using them. And we've been using them um, to heal our own bodies. And I instantly gave them to the mother. Um, uh, and... Um, I wasn't sure about um, infants, so we, we just did a little research, and there's one specifically, the ferrum phosphate, that actually reduces fever, and you can give that to a newborn baby. So I learned that yesterday, and I made sure that we have it, they have some, so that this never comes up again. How do we do this naturally? We figured it out, and um, we, we took care of them, and, and everybody's doing so much better, and, it, and that's just a great feeling, and I just want to express that, that there's so many ways to come together as a family, and, and even if you have differences of opinion or a little bit of fear still going on, you can you can work through it and um, make sure that everybody is, is doing what they need to to just take care of each other. Um, I did want to touch base on the, the dream that he had had about his son being sick. I think that um, I really, in my heart, know that we somehow are given information from God to just let us know. I, I'm curious what everyone else's thoughts are. That's kind of just how I feel about it, because I've been I've had dreams in the past, and I've uh, I've heeded them very. I've taken them very seriously, and I've I've told my son, and I've even called friends before and said, Hey, I had a dream about your your daughter or your son, and um, just I don't know if you take these things seriously, but I kind of do. Just I just I had to tell you. I feel like God was telling me to tell you this, and. Um, they did. They listened to me, and I'm I'm grateful for that because I really do think those things um, they play a role in our lives that um, have not been taken as serious as maybe we should take them. Um, that so those were yesterday's events. Um, we did have an event today that happened um, with my Jeep. Um, I've put we I've got a vehicle, an older vehicle that we've put some money in to try and fix up. I was pretty excited about it. We got, you know, we don't want vehicle payments. No more of the system stuff as much as possible. But, um, yeah, there was a knocking when we actually went to get the natural supplements from the natural food store yesterday for the children to get them better. And Ron was talking, talking, talking. Um, and I was like, shh, be quiet. I hear something. And as soon as I heard it, I knew something was not right. I then made him hush because I was saying a prayer like, Dear Lord, please get us to this health food store and back home today. Um, I don't know why I felt the need to pray right then. I just I just knew I needed to. Well, we made it to the health food store. We didn't hear any more noise. We made it all the way home safely. I went to get in the vehicle today, and the sound was atrocious. It was just knock, 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 knock. Um, and um, I went out to visit with my son this morning, and... Um, I had him look it over and he was like, we need to take it to the mechanic right away. We all had this suspicion. It's an engine knock. The engine is probably shot. Um, I got upset for, for a moment because I'm, and then I was just saying thank you because I know in my heart that that was a prayer answered that we made it to get what we needed for the children, for them to be okay. That vehicle is not what's important. The engine in that vehicle, that's not important. Us being here without a vehicle right now, I have I have family and I have I have good friends and um, that vehicle's not that important. I I thank God that we got what we needed yesterday to make sure that we're healthy and that's really what matters. And I think um, sometimes we shouldn't get so upset and worried because there are lessons to be learned in ev everything that happens, even when we think it's it's bad and things are rough and. Um, 
why does this have to happen to me and blah, blah, blah. Those thoughts really didn't cross my mind. For a second, I thought, are there things I need to, I need to um, repent for? Are there things going on? And then I thought, no, this is just another lesson that, that these are things that are not important. And I'm glad that I realized that right in the moment. I got upset for just a moment and then realized I'm supposed to understand that that vehicle's not important. And I'm glad that I took that lesson right then, that that is not what's important. What's important is that prayer that was answered for me yesterday to make sure that the children had the natural medicine from the earth that goes in their bodies that makes them healthy. That is what I took from that. And um, I'm, I just, I hope that maybe this message can and can help others see that even when things are seem like they're not going um, as smoothly as you'd like, there's still probably a really good lesson in it. There really is. And I know, I know these things to be true. I just, I know it from experience. And that's why I wanted to share just the couple of things that happened um, over the last couple of days. Um, even my fear and, and uh, what we went through. Do you have anything to add to that? Good one. Good one. I don't know. <laughs> hmm. all over the place maybe not do you have anything else i have a couple more things i i well i i i might make a part two once i start to actually start talking i might just yeah make that i might wait and yeah wait till she's done and i might make a part two where i just get to going about something yeah early. he's had a lot that he's wanted to talk about he's... and i don't know what to say or how it's going to come out <laughs> so yeah you go ahead for now Okay, so I wanted to discuss also just prayers and um, and love and how powerful I, I feel those can be. Um, I've heard others um, speak. We like to watch other channels too. I love, love hearing um, when others are trying to convey the message of love in their prayer and when they need prayer. And I, and I do. I, I often, I pray for, for everyone out there. I pray that everyone gets a positive message when they need it the most. Um, I hope that my prayers reach someone and and I know that um, even when you're when you're in a dark place um, just a simple gesture of love can 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 bring light and I hope um, I hope that I can be that for my children and my family and I hope that um, I keep receiving that even from others even if it's in a video I, I enjoy it very much and I just wanted to put that out there last thing that I really wanted to discuss mm. was... Mm. One second, I had something there. Okay. But love, love from a place of care. Yeah. Not love from a place of want. Because that's the trick and one of the traps of that word love. Yeah. And I, I I'll, I'll wait for part two before I get into this. But gestures with my hands are just me communicating just part of me communicating the message, whatever I'm speaking, so please just listen to my words. And I might say something about that in part two. But I wanted to say that because love, love, love is pushed and flashed out there and attached to debauchery yeah, and it really is. materialism and all this other nonsense that causes these conflicts within. So I just want to add that. And that is not love when it's coming from a place of want, want, want. Or me, 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 or... That's that dark vampiric snake type energy. And I'll just leave it at that for now. So love from a place of care though in the heart. Yes. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I agree with you. I, it does. It does have to come from a place of care. Which is why I'm not even um, concerned um, about the vehicle issue right now. I know that it will work itself out. I know that these things... Um, I learned a very valuable lesson even in that moment that I got upset and I don't I, I know that I don't have to worry about that because I have um, a, a couple very good friends that 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 love me from a place of care and I have um, two grown boys that love me and I know that um, the Lord will provide you 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 love and you will receive it in return and um, I know I know that to be true Another thing I wanted to talk about is feeling and avoiding darkness in, in specific moments. Um, I've had moments um, with um, being around others where I kind of feel a, 
almost like I feel a dark energy or I feel some sort of tension. And it's made me, we all know that we can pick up on, on the vibes. Some people call it vibes or... The clearer you are, the more Yeah, the negative energy is, uh, in a room, yes. you can feel it. And you can, and you can usually, when you have eyes to see and a heart to feel, you can feel where it's coming from, which individual is, um, is uncomfortable or um, something's just a little off. Um, I, I, I think that uh, one of the ways we can avoid letting that get to our heart, especially when it's someone you love, and you care about them and you want to help them and you want to guide them. Um, I think that darkness is, is them. They, they still have some healing going on. And I think sometimes um, a, a, an approach with more love is sometimes needed. Um, I know that I know that from experience that sometimes we do just have to offer some love. Even when we're, we're at the point of just harsh frustration like... Uh, you want to shake someone you love like this is not the right way to do this we we, we really don't have um, the right to do that to someone else we, we need to approach things with a little more love even when you can feel a little bit of darkness or tension and and you want to avoid or run away sometimes there are are individuals that need to be shut out for a little while so that they can they can come into themselves a little more but it doesn't mean that you have to completely let go or stop giving love. Um, I know that for a fact. That we still have to show love and kindness. Even when there's someone a little dark. Especially if it's your family. I, you've got to continue to show love. And, and, and try to avoid, avoid taking any of the negative energy in. Um, it is possible. I did not used to think that it was possible to do that. I used to get so frantic. And when... Someone wouldn't listen to me, and I'm like, oh, I have to tell you this is the right way. I would get very frustrated, and um, I would get mad, and I would take it out on them, and that, that didn't help the situation not one bit. So please just um, know that you can guard yourself and your heart and still offer love to the ones that you're trying to help. I know that you can, and um, you just have to find that peace and calmness within your heart. Um, that was another part of my lesson today with the with the Jeep breaking down. Um, I did, I, I, I instantly, oh my gosh, what are we going to do? That's like a fear response, you know, and and I'm learning to control those. And, and it was a good feeling to instantly just know that, no, this is, this is another lesson. Like that's a material possession right. that yep, yep. I was kind right. of holding on to a little bit. And like, oh, that doesn't even matter. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, thank you for showing still me. Here. Yeah, showing me again. Like that doesn't even matter. Like the fact that my grandson and my daughter are healthy, and that I made it to get what I needed to get for them was uh, it was an amazing feeling. It made my heart feel very, very full today to learn that lesson that um, these things will work out, and uh, it's it's nothing to to be worried about. I've noticed the last week. I've man, we shouldn't worry about. Just little things. We just I I I've, I've spent my lifetime worrying about things that I should have never um, even given my energy to, really, because it's part of that garbage out there, you know. And um, I'm trying to pull away from the garbage as much as possible. So um, just love the ones that are around you. Um, and and even when you feel a little darkness or or negative energy or they're not receiving the message, the way that you're trying to convey it, their perception may be a little off. Um, still just offer love because that, that's what we can do and, and we have to just be there because your light will still shine and, and they will find their way. I know that they will. What do you think mm. about that? Well said. Well said. And I also think... <clears throat> One second. For my part on that and about avoiding about avoiding the harmful impact of that energy on yours, that dark energy. Or that vampiric energy or that energy of usury or that energy of toxicity or fracturedness inside that hasn't healed yet, however you might want to put it. Because it's varying degrees out there in each maybe, in me still too, as I still try to work through these things. Um... Uh, what I could offer here is that you can also help someone that you love and care for 
by doing it from a distance, by leaving that door open for them to always come back through, but it's if they come back through to you in the right way for the help you have to offer. It's knowing if they're ready to accept the help you're ready to offer or are they coming and running to that door over and over just only to take and use you or your energy as a crutch to continue their own whatever behavior that's keeping them in a state of darkness, such as consuming all of the toxic processed food, drink, chemical-based stuff out there to include pharmaceuticals and things. That's why she talked about the natural way to deal with what's going on out there and being created to go on. Consider also, like I said before, what's being sprayed in the air, the electromagnetic frequencies and how those interact. Think of fungal, think of fungal infections. Think of those interactions with those frequencies and those things and what funguses and things and technology, which is being sprayed. All of these things, consider all of these things are already in the body and what they're trying to get you to add to your body or temple, so to speak. Yeah. What I'm trying to say is, while that temple, each of us, is filled with darkness and that's informational as well, based on beliefs from they and them or whoever taught they and them to teach someone something, when they're still locked in that state, sometimes the best way is to Turn your back, so to speak, to, like she said, to let them be with their self and deal with their self. Because I'll tell you, yeah. when I went through my thing, and I just started spewing off at the mouth all these things I was trying to understand and, and convey, because I was in a state of so just such a broken, fractured psyche of compartmentalization on so much different knowledge that I had no comprehension of, let alone wisdom. I was far from that at the time. But what I'm saying is when I recognized there was more and there was a spark in there and I went through the whole thing that I've talked about. She, I couldn't get through to my wife, the one I was closest with and loved the most, that I could feel things. I was feeling these things. And I didn't know what it meant. And I was getting emotional and all kinds of things. And I I was literally had my meltdown. Big time. Breakdown. Whoa. (laughs) It was a lot. But the best thing. She couldn't comprehend really what I was saying either. Because it was such a 180 flip night and day. So to speak type of thing. So that caused separation here with us. Yes it did. And I needed that. Because then the time I was. I was forced, anyway, I was like on that mission anyway to go try and find myself or memories of myself when I was young, back where I grew up, all these things, which she got mad at, she was getting mad at me for because she didn't understand what I was doing or what I was feeling or thinking, and I couldn't convey it to her. And even if I could clearly, I don't know if she would have got what I was saying anyway. I didn't care at that time. So, (laughs) But I needed the time alone as well. We did need the division just for a short time because... The, um, that helped me is all I'm saying. That yeah. time I spent alone in my vehicle and exploring and trying to find myself and what things meant inside. Mm. I needed that retracing back of steps inside and reflection on memories I didn't even know were gone because my memory was so shocked yeah. because my lifetime of toxins, which I've spoke about before, which is another reason don't accept any of these injections of poisons that are coming, being pushed. Stop blindly believing in authority, period. Mm. Start there. You have just as much authority as any other man or woman walking the face of this place we all walk all at the same time. In the very moment you listen to these words or or whenever, because anyway, thanks. Yeah. I'll just leave it there, whatever I was adding to. So yeah, before I get to... Too far off. <laughs> I think I think the division that was that that we um, experienced was good for not not only for him but for me. I was I was I, I was angry, it. and then I had to, and even while I was laying in in the other room or in a different room, angry, I um, I had to analyze why am I so mad? Why am I? That's when I really realized that I let everything he did in our whole entire relationship, my whole mood. 
my every day was based on his behavior and his attitude. Am I going to have a good day today? It depends on what mood Ron's in. And that that's a horrible way to live your life. Not even for it's a yourself. Big external attachment. It is. It, yeah, what do they call it in psychiatry? Or psychiatry, they say it's, uh, what they say it was? Uh, it's like an attachment disorder. Codependency. Codependency. Yeah, Codependency. And that's exactly how I was living. Yeah. And um, when I, well, that time apart is what made me realize, like, why do I have to have a bad day just because he's being a grouch? Like, okay, I'm going to start ignoring him. And I'm going to have every day a day for me, no matter what kind of mood he's in. And, and I had the same issue yeah, that and, I had to go through myself yeah, yeah, with her. Yeah, and, and, and learning that was, it was like, holy cow, I'm finally living. Like, okay, you don't want to do whatever today? You, you sit your grouchy butt at home. I'm doing, this is what I'm doing today. What would you like to do today? And if there's any kind of, eh, he's having a bad day or whatever, I would go do my own thing. And he did the same thing if I was like, eh grouchy mood he would just go on about his day and do what he is doing and that is it's it feels so free like i feel so free from the, it was like i was really literally wrapped in chains and not living not living just not living not yeah. being and so fractured perception um, yeah. in the psyche was yeah and, and um yeah. that's a that's a that's a crazy way to live and i know that i lived that way it was dependent on so others around me on and what their mood is and it's it's really um, a good feeling to know that someone, you can be in the room with someone who's not having a good day or in a bad mood, and even if they won't speak to you about it, um, still be um, calm and at peace within yourself and not let that affect you. Um, it's another way to avoid darkness. Like um, Sometimes we do. We just have uh, bad days, and it doesn't necessarily mean that person is dark or um, anything like that. It just means that we sometimes we just have days where we have to go inside of ourselves and and analyze and think things through and um, I, that's a really really happy place to be when you learn how to go in and deal with go inside and deal with your and feelings get rid of that. yes and get rid of it it's almost like an instant release and um, of, of just pressure on your on your soul that's the only way I know to describe it. Is bring it, a wholeness to you. Yeah. A wholeness. Yeah. It's, it's but a very it good takes feeling. getting that darkness out and realizing those things inside. Because the systems themselves have been set up in that same way to create a codependency yeah. of thought, of fracturing of the mind and perception of what reality is and what we are in association with it to make us think all these actors and Clowns out there in different costumes with different labels attached. I used to be one. I'm not calling names. I used to act in that insane way. And I say clown as in it's a giant circus made by others' ideas of how society is going to function in a way that they can control it. They who understood how psychology, I've talked about it before. It is the darkness, and each has that darkness inside them to get rid of. Each and every one. Everyone's still playing a role or putting on an act or part of the show. Each has their own darkness to deal with, and each has to for their own sake and for everyone else's. I only say that because I had a ton of it to deal with in myself that I didn't realize had been put there. And by the time I realized how dark I was and how much harm I, I had caused and what I was really a part of, it was too late for me. Still might be too late, but I'm at peace with that because I found that wholeness inside that she's speaking of and I've healed those fractured compartmentalization pieces of my own psyche, my own perception of myself, my false ego I have. And it took a lot, a lot of inner work and reflection and the actual, like I said, purging of toxins physically and informationally to get the false beliefs out of the head so they stop influencing the perception and to get the chemicals and things out of the body so the body and the mind can process and comprehend information quickly, deeply, and profoundly. Because everyone has that ability. It's just, that's why we've all been poisoned on purpose. So, but each can heal from that. And that's, it's happening. It's happening. So everyone, it even is. the most dark you should, it's most, 
It's not most for you, but you're included. You need a heal as well. Because you need to realize how clearly we can see what's going on. Those of us that can see and feel. And yeah, the plan is to get rid of us, of course. Blah, blah, blah. So history or his story can continue to repeat. I don't think so. I don't feel it going like that. Though you may believe different. I would say I know it's not going to. So I guess that's what I'll add for that piece. Yeah, yeah. I I don't have much more to talk about. I just um, uh, if you if you've listened to the video, if you enjoy hearing us talk, I'm I'm um, I'm glad if we can help help or or uh, provide some sort of um, just um, camaraderie. I guess I want to say just uh, like-minded people listening because I know I enjoy listening to to others as well. But just um, if you have someone in your life that you're that you're that you're feeling um, a little negative about, but you 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 want to reach out to them. I, I really suggest you do that um, in person, um, preferably. Don't send a text message. Call somebody you love and tell them you love them. Um, that's very important. And I'll say on video that um, Ron, Damien, Bree, Desiree, Lux, granddaughter, I love you, and um, I want you to know that uh, every day, all day, every day. Um, that I love you very much and even when I offer guidance that um, may upset you um, it's just because I love you and I, I hope that you truly feel that in your hearts that I love you very much and that is true she does so yeah well said what to say I had something but it uh, I don't know I got lost what you're saying different I'm sorry. So anyway, oh, I was just going to say uh, thank you folks that show up, that listen, that, that really, they give us your time and attention to listen yeah. to what we have to say because that's all you have here. In your life, all you have is your time and attention and what yeah. you decide to spend it on. So we really appreciate it. Mm -hmm. And we really do hope you get some of value. And, and thank you also for the things you write in the comments you leave. Yes. And for what, what you all share. I really, I really appreciate it as well. I do. Yes, very much. So, I guess, yeah, I'll leave it at that. And if you want to listen to whatever might start pouring out, I think... uh a part two might be in order because I might just start talking right after this. So, yeah, see you next time. Thank you for listening. All right. Thank you for listening. Much love to everyone. Please reach out to someone you love. Just tell them. Tell them you love them. All right.